Hello everybody, welcome to the NC podcast. My name is Natasha Collins and I'm the host and founder of NC Real Estate, which includes its members club for landlords and property investors to come and build profitable property portfolios that completely align with their goals. If you haven't downloaded my working paper, Property Investment and COVID-19 in the UK, you are going to need to do that because that's got strategies for helping you with your property portfolios during these tough times. And I am updating it on a regular basis as things change. You need to go to ncrealestatemembersclub.com forward slash COVID-19. It's free. I'm not asking you for your email address, but if you want those strategies, I have just been putting together as much information in there as I possibly can so that you are supported and you know what to do in these times because I get it. There is a lot of panic. There is a lot of chaos. You are probably feeling like what on earth is going on? And it's completely fine to be feeling like that. But what I want you to do is go and download that free PDF because it gives you some real tangible action steps that you can take, which is going to support you through this period. Okay, on to today's episode. Today, I am so excited. I've got Dr. Jan Wilcox with me. She's a fellow of the RICS and a senior fellow of the Higher Education Academy, has 20 years experience working in asset management, is the co-author of Property Asset Management, which for those of you who were asking me the other day what book I had on my desk and I showed it to you, um, it was that book. You remember the red one with the grayed out buildings on the front? She's a property investor, is a lecturer for Suffolk Business School, an examiner for the Institute of Residential Property Management, and sits on the regulatory board of the Association for Residential Managing Agents, and we're also colleagues at UCM. Hi, Jan. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for inviting me, Natasha. I've just been making a note of your paper because I think I might need to have a quick look at that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The, the link's going to go in the show notes under this podcast and I'll send you the link as well. Perfect, thank you. How are you doing in the midst of all of this, Kate? Yes, it's, um, it's strange times. I mean, I think, I imagine it will say this in your paper, but I have been in touch with my tenants saying, just please let me know if you're going to have trouble paying the rent, please get in touch because um, to my mind, if I know, then I can prepare. If it just doesn't turn up in my account, then it's a problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and with all of the help and support that tenants are getting at the moment, there should be enough of a buffer for them to at least be paying something. Mm. And if you can keep tenants going, sure you know that. I, I mean, with the amount of commercial tenants over the years that I've had to keep paying on the drip. You know? yeah. <laughs> Give me 50 pounds, at least something. Let's get these arrears down. We can do that as landlords. We'll get through it. It's just yeah. frustrating, but it is what it is. It's not just us, it's everybody. Absolutely. Unprecedented times, as I keep saying. Unprecedented. But if we're resilient, <laughs> hopefully we, we have get to be. we have to be resilient. Um it's so good having you here. It's nice doing these podcasts because um we're on camera, we're talking to each other, we're having a catch up. So should we go back to the beginning? How did you get started in the property industry? Because you've achieved so much. Uh, totally by accident, uh, and I don't imagine I'm the first person to say that. Um, basically, I came back, I did A-levels, everybody at my highly academic school went to university and I decided not to, just to mess up their figures, a bit childish. Um, went abroad, travelled a bit, um, came back to England, had no money, did a typing course, uh, and then I ended up working for an estate agent, oh no, sorry, I ended up working for the health authority when they were disposing of property. Mm -hmm. And I was just doing the typing and I saw the massive fees that agents were getting for selling um, surplus property, um, health authority property. And thought, oh wow, there's a lot of money in property. So my next move was into an estate agent. Um, and then I qualified, I did a part, well, I started doing the old um, RICS exams. Uh, but when only four out of 40 of us passed, I decided to go on to a degree instead and then did my degree and then um, just kind of, yeah, carried on with it, really. I, I always knew, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, but I knew I couldn't bear to do a job that meant I'd be sitting in an office every day. So that was a big attraction of property for me. Mm -hmm. And actually, a lot of, I mean, I don't know if a lot of your students think it, but a lot of 
when I'm talking to students, they're like, well, it's corporate. We sat in the office nine till five. It's, it's not true. What does, what does a day in the life for you look like? Uh, well, right now, very <laughs> 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 different to what it did a while ago. Uh, no, I mean, I, for me, I'm very lucky now because I have a, a portfolio of jobs and it means I can, to an extent, pick and choose what I do. I do have certain deadlines, but no day is the same. Um, every day includes uh, time for me to exercise pretty much, which is a real you know, mm-hmm. benefit. Um, but no, it varies, you know, at the bottom end of the scale, it will be te- uh, cleaning out a block drain because the tenants have been putting baby wipes down it that's Mm -hmm. probably about the pits of it um at the top end i don't know i'm not sure what my favorite bit of it is really uh i guess it's it's the people um the combination of people that i deal with is is the best bit of what i do but no day is the same well Mm -hmm. wasn't up until now (laughs) (laughs) so we're going to be talking about a bit we're going to be talking about property management strategy because i think it's one of the things that as a property investor um, and a lot of the property investors that are listening I we talk about finance we talk about finding properties we talk about getting tenants in and for a lot of people that's where it stops and I'm very passionate about property management and asset management and that side of things um, and I know you are too so I want to talk about why is a strong property management strategy so important why should landlords look further than just getting tenants in uh well i think it's interesting that you should ask this because one of the things i teach that it's not property related is strategic management and i was trying to explain to my undergrads that you know you have to have a strategy and they said well you know really tiny companies with just the owner they don't have to have a strategy and i said of course they do because otherwise you can't measure whether you're whether what you're doing is working and i think for property management um I think it has to go beyond just getting a tenant in um, and making sure they're paying rent. The thing about property that I've found uh, in my experience is that if you don't keep a very close eye on it, well, first of all, you need your your strategy at the outset. And mine was just to build a portfolio to give me a little bit more flexibility work-wise because the portfolio brought in my kind of bread and butter. And then I could go and do the work I chose to do rather than the work I had to do. Um, And what I found is that if you know what you want to do for me it was definitely a long-term hold and I was just going to build it up slowly which is what I have done Um, but you need to decide are you going to invest in the property if you're holding it long term so obviously for me I was Um, are you trying to get high rental income and kind of almost bleed the property dry or are you going to balance rental income and capital growth uh, in value Um, and I think the other thing is checking I, I think my underlying strategy it sounds really kind of a bit, um, can't think of the word. It sounds a little unrealistic, but for me, it's all about, are you keeping your tenants happy? And that's my ultimate mm-hmm. strategy is keeping them happy and being fair. And what I've discovered is if you keep in touch with them, um, you can avoid having lengthy voids. And that for me is the key, because as you know, an extended void just completely wrecks your strategy, your income, your plans. So, um, it's been very much about building relationships with them and not going for the highest rent and not going for the first tenant who comes along, but actually trying to choose somebody that you can maintain a relationship with. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think the other thing about the strategy is property can deteriorate so fast. So I think you have to be very clear that you've got to go frequently and check what they're doing. Um, Yeah. I think those are my two things. Did that, I'm not sure that answered it very well, Natasha, please tell me if it didn't. No, it it did because your and everybody's strategy is going to be different. But you're saying that actually, if you focus on the people and the people are essentially clients of yours, that you build up the trust, like we all hope to do in business, and that encourages them to stay with you because they know that you're dependable. How often do you get in contact with your tenants? Well, it depends on how long I've had them. I mean, my. Uh, longer standing tenants and some people might think this is going a bit far but they moved in um, as a couple for the first time living together Um, they then got married uh, they then had a baby and when they had a baby I took them around a baby gift Um, so I've now had them I had them seven years in my first property and I've had them for three years in the property I moved them into so 10 years we've been together 
with them, I don't go every quarter because our relationship is such that if they have an issue, they'll ring me up and I'll go around. Um, with my ones that I don't know so well, then I do go quarterly. Okay. Um, and do they keep, how do they contact you? Are they email, text? Yeah, it's always email. Because I teach a lot, I'm not available on the phone. So they always just email me and say whatever it is that they've got an issue with. Mm -hmm. and, and they're also, I think, because we have that good relationship, the tenants I don't know well expect a reaction just like that. Whereas mm -hmm. these ones that know me well understand that I may be teaching all day or I may be dealing with something with the children. So I can't respond immediately. And they, they're very good. Every time they email, they say, well, this is a problem. We understand you're busy. Just let us know when you can get to it, which takes away such a lot of the stress. Yes. Of property management. And then it's the trust as well, isn't it? They trust that even yeah. though you might not respond immediately, you're going to do something about it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's a strategy in itself. If you follow through on what you say you're going to do people who don't that's where it's yeah, yeah. Starts getting iffy so what do you think the key things an investor should be aware of when putting together a property management strategy I think you'd have to work out what your core objective is what is it you're after for me I mean my ultimate strategy the reason I got into investing in property apart from I thought I knew more about that than investing in the stock market was that I have two children and uh, the way things are now there was no way they were ever going to be able to buy a house um, mm -hmm. unless they became fund managers or something so I thought I just want to make sure I've got two completely paid up houses so that when the time comes they have somewhere to live without the stress of I must earn lots of money um, but then I think you need to work out do you want to achieve a yield do you want to achieve um, a capital return do you want to keep your properties fully let? Do you want to do them up, put a tenant in, sell them on? Uh, is it a long-term hold? Is it a trade on? So I think you, you just need to think, what is your core objective? And for me, it was this long-term hold that I wanted two of them to be completely mortgage-free so that my two girls would have somewhere to live in years to come. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess this kind of thing of keeping the tenants happy has been a part of that because Although I knew it, I dealt with big commercial properties, I know how bad voids are, but it's a lot less personal when you're dealing with other people's money, isn't it, than when you're dealing with your own. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. The overriding thing is building that relationship to get voids as, as minimal as possible. And it's not just the tenants, it's also, as you know, a relationship with your building team that you can get them in quickly, get it refurbed and get them out if you do get a bit of tenant turnover. Mm-hmm. Can I ask then, did you buy your investments using a mortgage and have paid down on that? My first one I bought with cash because uh, I sold my flat in London um, mm -hmm. that I'd lived in and then rented out. Um, and I was that lucky generation whereby, well, my first house I bought at 20, that doubled in value. My flat in London in the space of, I don't know, was it as long as 10 years? Maybe not. Tri tripled in value wow. so I was able to um, just buy the first one with cash and actually the second one I then saved up for and also bought with cash now as an investor that's not a particularly good idea in terms of yield but for me it meant I immediately had two that were um, mortgage free mm -hmm. so I'd achieved my overall objective which was a house for the girls mm -hmm. Going forward, I'm now debating, do I want to borrow money and carry on expanding it or do I just settle? And I'm not sure of the answer to that yet in, in the current market. <laughs> yeah. There could be some really interesting opportunities. Exactly. Coming up, yeah. Um, so how does understanding how to manage your property portfolio give you the upper hand for long-term planning? Well, to my mind, it's all about budgeting um you know when you've got major expenditure coming up you know when you've got voids coming up uh you know what the level of rents are now and in the future um and you know i gave the example of my tenants well when they had a baby uh i assumed which is maybe a bit of a rash assumption that they might be wanting to have another baby because that's often what people do and they were very tight in that space so as soon as they'd had the baby and I'd given them the present. I said, so what are your plans? And they said, well, you know, we do need to move to somewhere bigger. And I said, well, perfect. I have one not far away. My tenants are leaving in five months time. Come and have a look, see if that will work. Um, so I think that's the, the sort of planning of looking ahead rather than, oh, they're fine. They're paying rent, just leave them to it. It was planning ahead to see if I could hang on to them. And um, obviously they have stayed. Um, and I don't think number two is on the way yet, but I believe it is in the planning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so are you looking after your property 
yourself? You have you got managing agents? A bit of both. Uh, the one, obviously, these guys that I've had for a very long time, I manage that myself because I know them. I know what's required. I know that they're happy to wait. Um, the other property, which is a, a sort of starter home, it's a, a two bed. Um, fairly small, fairly close to the town centre. Uh, I used agents to get tenants for it and because the tenants there, other than these ones who lasted seven years, they only tend to last two or three years and then move on. Um, and I can't respond quickly enough because of the rest of my work. So I am using mm -hmm. the agents on that one. But the one that my tenants um, of 10 years have been in is, is five minutes walk from home. So that's fine. The other one is a 15 minute drive and it's just not convenient. So I do use agents for that one. 